And some of you guys have this misconception. Yeah, I talk about my prediction streak, but I've been wrong before. But check this. At the end of the day, I've been right a lot more times in difficult fights than I have been wrong. And this is a hard fight for, for me to predict, to be honest, just because there's a lot of different variables. And I told you that from the onset. And I can make a very solid argument about both guys winning, period. You know what I mean? I can make a strong... And it's... it's to the point where you can't even dispute what I'm going to say. So it's a pick em fight for real. Like I'm picking Broner. I think it's he's the he's the one that they want to win. I'm picking Broner via some type of decision. I wouldn't be surprised if it, it was a controversial decision. You know what I mean? Like a majority decision, split decision. But some people are saying Broner's going to get knocked out. I don't know. My pick is Broner via some type of decision. That's what I'm rocking with. I think it goes the distance. It, it's hard for me to pick Broner because of things like that. I'm, I'm telling you, you'll notice I'm very consistent as a person. And I'm picking Broner, but it's very, very hard for me to pick Broner. Because I don't like... I like stability. You know what I'm saying? I'm an intense... Just in life in general, I'm an intense planner. I like some sort of stability with a person. Like, Zab Judah, love him to death... But sometimes he doesn't show that mental fortitude that he can get through anything. James Kirkland, he doesn't show me. Victor Ortiz, they all have talent. But sometimes they don't show me what I need to see in certain fights. You're like, what? Why does Zab do that? Why the fuck did Victor Ortiz say this? Why did Broner do that? To me, Broner is going to almost have to show me something that he hasn't showed in previous fights, to be perfectly honest. Like, he's going to have to put it all together in this particular fight because Sean's a dog he's gonna come at him he's gonna apply pressure he has good power and he's very rugged and tough and you know what I mean and the reason I'm picking decision for Broner also is because I don't see him really stopping Sean Porter so that's why I'm saying Broner needs to show me something that he hasn't previously really showed me because he has to put it all together he, when he lets his hands go he boxes it like he looks good he looks very good his combinations um it's just he doesn't always let his hands go. Sometimes he's economical. He can't do that. I think, honestly, the Maidana fight, I think that... And I just overall see Sean Porter, He his style is just so wild and clumsy. A lot of people keep saying Maidana, but in my honest opinion, and there's no disrespect to the Porters, in my opinion, I think Maidana refined his skills, his brawler style with Robert Garcia, making him a more complete brawler like as good as as good as he possibly can be my is never going to be willie pep or lomachenko or something and just like you know what i mean real light on his feet and stuff like that and the other thing is i think my is unorthodox he's harder to read he even caught floyd mayweather you know what i'm saying versus if if sean porter were to fight mayweather i i really don't see porter catching mayweather with with some of the shots that my did but my so, uh, and it's not even just Maidana, and I don't think Sean Porter is is that refined like Maidana. Like that jab, just learning the ga jab with um, Robert Garcia has made Maidana just that much better. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my post fight, Adrian, the problem, Broner, and Showtime, Sean Porter. First of all, I want to say congratulations to Sean Porter. Now, let me put out this disclaimer. Some people said. Oh, the prediction king, Ego, you're ducking. You're afraid to do a post fight. First of all, I'm never afraid. This is easy work. The prediction I picked, I said Broner by some type of decision, maybe a majority decision, unanimous or split decision. I could see it going that way. I was wrong. Congrats to Sean Porter. But this is the thing. Some people don't understand with my predictions. I've been wrong, I think this year, Ruslan Provodnikov and Matisse and Broner Porter. And if you listen to the breakdowns, what I'm saying throughout the prediction, a lot of it is true, even if the person doesn't win. So there's no, I have no shame in my game because at the end of the day, I still feel I'm right because I know my stuff, even though the person I didn't select. Um, and I said it. I mean, you guys seen the hesitation in my voice. I specifically said, and you guys heard the earlier clips, that Broner is a wild card. He's like a Zab Judah, Victor Ortiz type of person. And it's hard to bank. So I should have went with the safe bet and went with the Porter. But I'm not Pacquiao. I'm not going to make excuses. 
But let's get into the breakdown of the fight. Oh, yeah, one other thing. While some of you guys are leaving comments like, oh, you're ducking the prediction. No, I was working. I was at the Ward Smith fight, like I told you guys. So I didn't even watch the fight until just right now. I was up late um, doing some work. I was working, getting coverage for you guys. I got some interviews. Stay tuned for those. So I don't come to your job, McDonald's or wherever you guys work, bothering you. So when I'm working, don't don't bother me. Like, you guys can leave comments. That's cool. But some of y'all trying to harass me like I'm afraid to do a post-fight. So, again, congrats to Sean Porter. Now let me give my breakdown and assessment of this fight. This is the fight y'all wanted me to watch? Man, I'm going to be real in this uh, post-fight breakdown. And it has nothing to do with my prediction being wrong. I, I could care less because it don't put no money in my pocket, whether Broner or Porter won. But this fight was a little bit anticlimactic for me like i expected like this is that fight you know what i'm saying like this was there was mayweather pacquiao if they make canelo Cotto, and then right below that i was picturing the fight like this i'm like this is a good fight so to me it was a bit anticlimactic i expected more um just from the event uh i didn't like the commentary tony weeks did a suck-ass job I thought he was terrible in this particular fight. My, my, and I like Tony Weeks, so this is not disrespect. I think his son or something follows me. I don't want people sending me death threats and shit because I said something about Tony Weeks. I like him normally, but I didn't like his job in this. And the reason being, this was like, it was hard to watch, to be honest. It was like a WrestleMania, you know what I mean, King of the Cage or some MMA stuff. Like Broner, clear, and this is why, I man, I should have just went with my gut. Broner, he just doesn't have it. Like, like he, he can when he's beating up on smaller guys, then that's when he can impose his his will and stuff. But you have to take a plunge to want to be great. You know what I'm saying? And I just don't see it. I think he's just more happy being rich and a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? But he might want to take that money out of the toilet because you might not keep getting paydays acting like this. Not only did you lose. Like you gotta you gotta put in perspective. The reason Broner's getting so much flat like me on my predictions, I feel cool because I didn't disrespect Porter. I didn't disrespect Broner. I gave you a real assessment. But what he did is some jackass shit where I'm not shaking your hand and he's like, I'm A B, I ain't losing again. I'm I can't lose. You know what I'm saying? He's doing so he's going all like off off left with, with what he's doing. So in the end of the day, it makes it worse. My predictions I could care less because I never said, oh, Sean Porter is going to get, he's going to get demolished by Broner. I said a split decision, majority decision, or some type of decision. You know what I'm saying? And and the thing is, some of you guys are like, oh, your prediction was wrong, Ego. But y'all was the ones predicting that Sean Porter would stop Broner inside of five rounds. Broner didn't even get knocked down. And the only person that did get knocked down is Sean Porter for the first time in his career. So, again, if you want to talk about predictions, who's right and wrong, like, most of y'all were off because most of the people that I seen that were picking Porter, not all, but a lot of them were leaving crazy comments. Broner gets knocked out in the first round and crazy stuff. So I'm I'm good. As far as the performance, um, again, you have to give brunt the brunt of the blame to Broner. He he just didn't take that plunge to be great. And I told you in my prediction that he would have to put it all together. Now some people said, Oh, why are you picking Broner? He he has to be someone he's not. That's not true. I think he has the talent. I mean, you've seen the left hook in the 12th round, but it, it's just, I hate when fighters wait. Chavez Jr. did the same thing with Martinez. He, he he let Martinez have his way for damn near 11 and a half rounds before he did something. And it's too little too late. So Broner, I've seen him do great body work, more or less at like 130, 135. I've seen him walk guys down. They were probably smaller. I've seen him use, like back, a lot of before Broner was A.B., he used to use more footwork. So I've seen him do some of these things. I've seen the heart in the Maidana fight. And I told you in my prediction, he was going to have to put it all together. And he failed miserably. Like the biggest thing that I noticed with Broner, like I told you, I'll give you guys the good, the bad, the ugly. The the bad is that he, he acted a fool before this fight. And this is the performance you produce. You got over a million dollars for this fight. And this is what you produce. You didn't let your hands go. Um... Before the fight, I think Broner said something like he didn't watch the Kill Brook Sean Porter fight or he's not studying that fight. And I was like, oh, he's full of shit. Actually, I don't think he was full of shit. You didn't watch the fight. 
And if you did, then you took nothing positive and constructive away from it. So I, I actually believe him. He was, he's talking about he didn't study the Kell Brook fight. Yeah, you damn right you didn't study because you didn't do the things that you needed to do to win this fight. Namely, a jab. Like, I mean, I just didn't think he was going to have a non-existent jab. The thing with Sean Porter is he's he's rugged, he's in shape, he's hungry, and he has the will to win. So he wants to win. He's a competitive person. You can see that in his interviews and hear it when he's um, talking and in his fights and stuff. He wants to win. Now, this is the other thing I said in my prediction, which I still believe, and even more so after seeing this, as far as Sean Porter. Sean Porter clearly won the fight to me. I think Broner two rounds, maybe three. Three is probably being generous, you know what I mean? But I told you guys that Maidana has refined his brawler style with Robert Garcia. And after watching this, I really believe that. And I'm not taking anything away because, like I just told you, Sean Porter clearly won the fight because he outworked Broner. But this is the thing. I think Sean Porter, like, when you got a guy who's holding you and fouling you and using elbows, and see, this is the thing. I've seen, this is this how bad Broner looked to me. I've seen Amir Khan and Floyd Mayweather, even Bernard Hopkins, but I'll, I'll say Floyd Mayweather and Amir Khan. Amir Khan versus Lamont Peterson, let's say Mayweather versus Maidana, right? When when they're getting smothered and getting mugged or whatever, I've seen them push off with their 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 elbows and arm forearms and all kinds of stuff like that and try to create more space because the guy's coming at them in a rugged dogfight style fashion. But Broner, out of all of those people I just named, Mayweather and Khan, did it way more flagrantly. You know what I'm saying? Like Amir Khan was it was pretty flagrant in the Lamont Peterson fight, but he was still fighting. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like what Broner was doing was some next level of flagrant. You know what I'm saying? He was he was like literally foot he called Sean Porter a football player. This motherfucker in one of the rounds stiff armed Sean Porter trying to create space. He just doesn't have the ability to think. The pressure style he's not good at unless the pressure style is Gavin Reese or somebody who's smaller that you know what I mean may not have the 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 tenacity or or the the heart to push through it and and you know what I mean maybe smaller than him but these bigger pressure fighters he, he just he doesn't have he doesn't compute stuff fast enough so he'll never be I already knew this but he'll never be big bro because big bro that's one of his gifts Floyd Mayweather has the ability to process information fast and figure guys out and stuff like oh he's gonna go here i need to be here Did broner doesn't do that he was he he was struggling trying to create space now oscar de la hoya would have told him this if he was in broner's corner you gotta use a jab you gotta disrupt and this is the reason this is the thing i give majority of the fight looking sloppy to broner because he didn't know how to respond to the awkward herky-jerky come forward um i did like sean porter was throwing some some like head fake head movements like some feints and stuff i like that i think that was hard for broner to measure but um so i give Bron the brunt of it to broner for not knowing what to do but i do give some to sean porter still because i think he could have crispened up to his shots because you got to look at it like this if a guy doesn't want the inside fight and you're trying to make it a rugged dog fight and he keeps clinching and holding you and tony weeks wasn't doing shit about it then to me, that means you should you should um, work on accuracy and precision. And to me, Sean Porter was a bit more sloppy in those situations. You know he keeps clinching, and it didn't look like Tony Weeks was ever going to do anything about it, right? And that means, to me, Sean Porter should have slowed it up just a little bit, but not lose that the snowball effect, the, you know what I mean, the momentum that he had. But work on the precision of his shots you know what i'm saying because at the end of the day if you're getting clinched and held every single time your head pushed down forearm stiff arm and all this stuff then the shots you do land you got to make them count period you know what i mean so round 10 was probably sean porter's best round off memory i think he, he landed some good rights uh he looked good in that round broner he he's just I don't know man like I I put it this way I'm I'm not picking him for shit like straight up unless he shows me something different but I, I'm I can't pick him man like I'm not picking him for nobody like nobody because like I said at the very least Sean Porter like I'm not gonna beat down his performance because he won and he showed that he wanted to win and he had the hunger to win Broner didn't show me that where was the hand speed where was the combination punching 
It's like Broner's so worried about being a celebrity and looking cute and maybe not getting knocked down again that he's not willing to go for it. You know what I mean? And he's not willing to take that plunge and that leap of faith to the next level to become great. Even in the 12th round, Sean Porter was hurt. You can tell his whole fighting style changed. Had there been another round, it might have been different. You know what I'm saying? If he had a, another round and <clears throat> wasn't fully recovered. But Broner didn't like... Broner should have sold out and went for broke. You needed a knockout to win. You, you came as close as you possibly could. You were the first to knock Sean Porter down. And you let Sean Porter muscle you and, and buy time and smother you. So it, it's funny. The whole fight, Broner was um, smothering, pushing heads down. And um, the moment you have Sean Porter look like rattled a little bit in the 12th round or hurt or whatever you want to call it. Then he he pays back the favor and he don't let you get no work off because he smothers you to death and you can't score a knockout or another knockdown or or anything else to close up the fight or to make it a little bit closer. So he got Broner got a taste of his own medicine as far as I'm concerned. But as far as the whole fight, it was just um, I expected a lot more from it. I think Sean Porter, he just like I said with the Madonna comparison, people comparison comparing what Madonna did. Madonna to me is. Re- He's perfected his his brawler style as much as, as he could, you know what I mean? And that implementing the jab is significant. Sean Porter did have a jab a bit, but he just has to work on his, his accuracy. It's just like a whirlwind, which is still going to be a problem for people. But I don't know who I would pick Sean Porter to beat out of the elite. You know what I mean? I don't know that I could pick him to beat Kell Brook in a rematch. You know what I mean? I, don't, I can't picture him beating Floyd Mayweather. I don't think he beats Keith Thurman. You know what I mean? So that's just my opinion, not trying to shit on Sean Porter. And at the end of the day, he did what he was supposed to do. He outworked the shit out of Broner, and Broner didn't produce. Like I said, where was the hand speed? Where was letting your hands go? He, he really did none of that, and he held. And, and see, this is the thing that made Tony Weeks' officiating job even more horrific for me, is Broner had been doing all of the stuff that you docked him a point for in the 11th round. But you wait almost the entire fight in the championship rounds in in a fight that's ugly and sloppy and messy and all over the place, right? So you, you don't know what the scorecards are going to be, you know what I mean? Because some people are like, oh, Broner, his punches were more effective, but he was throwing singles. And then Sean Porter had the desire to win, but it looked kind of sloppy, and then he was getting held, so he couldn't get off like he wanted and stuff like that. So for Tony Weeks to wait... 11 rounds wait, wait to the last 16 seconds of the 11th round to finally jump in and do something i think that was bullshit like to me he should have been took the point away like early in the fight to the point where broner knew he was down you know what i mean like oh you know in the fourth round because broner did it all fight so why wait to the 16 second mark of the 11th round to do it you know what i'm saying at least do it to the point where, like, Broner was already down, and that was just a nail in the coffin, you know what I mean? So, had he done that earlier, then at least Broner would know that he's down a point and maybe could try something different earlier. I don't know, but I, I think it's um, it's irresponsible to allow those fouls to go on that long before you do something. Like, Tony Weeks, he was, he was like, 12 feet away from the action, I think. Like, he, he seemed, like, really far away from it, and... Obviously, that style favored Broner because he was allowing him to to hold ridiculous. But it it was not even just hold. He was Broner. I don't know. Broner just does some like clownish stuff to me, and and that's as honest as possible. The seventh round, um, he hit like did some super saiyan hit behind the head, reverse punch and stuff like that. Like I I just can't take Broner serious because I don't think he's taking Broner serious. He has like I said, Zab Judah, Victor Ortiz, and all those people, Chad Dawson, all these people I named. In that prediction video, that's what Broner it looks like he's on the path to because this game ain't going to respect you if you don't respect it. And you know what I mean? Don't shake the hand. And you did all of this hooting and hollering, huffing and puffing. And that's the performance you produce. So shout out to Sean Porter. That is my official post fight. I don't run from nobody. Make sure you like my video as always. Hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.